Kembo, 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 nata tanzambi ya manzulu. Kinfumu kia kuyisa. All praises to the most high, nzamba mpungu tulendo. Greetings to the bena Congo, bena nzambi. The dispersed of Isolele in the eastern and western hemisphere, I pray that you are well in the spirit of Tanzama Pongotolendo is with all of you wherever you are in this world. I am Nabi Kefa. Welcome to another live episode. Today we're going to talk about the Congo lion and leopard. Congo is the lion. Congo is also the leopard. And today I want to talk about these two animals. Yes, these two majestic animals who also represent the totems among the Congo people. Hallelujah. So before we start, and I say Congo, so when I say Congo, I mean Bantu. Yes, because our Bantu people are connected with Congo. All right. So before we start, make sure to like the video, share the live feed right now. Invite some people to join us. It's going to be amazing. Yes, so invite some people to join us right now. So like the feed. Now I will also uh, I will do the same. Okay, I will do the same. I'll also invite some people to join us right now. Before we start. Hallelujah. Kembo. Zulu. So let me uh, look up uh, the live feed. Okay, found it. Now let me do the same. Let me share. Invite some brothers to join us right now. All right. How you all doing, brothers and sisters? How are you all doing? You good? Yeah. You are allowed to make your presence known in the chat, of course. Yes. So we're gonna talk about uh, the Congo, the lion, and the leopard. Okay. We're gonna look at the. Uh, these two animals who are also connected with Congo, that is to say, with the Bantu people. Yes, we know that the, the lion is a majestic animal, right? Spoken about in the Bible. But what about the leopard? Is the leopard in the Bible? Yes, the leopard is in the Bible. Now, both animals are majestic animals and they have a spiritual signification amongst the Bantu. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. And we're going to, yes, reveal this secret, this revelation to you all so we can understand. Now, when we, when you read the Bible, there are certain animals that are spoken of, you know. Um, the most familiar are the lion, of course, you know, representing uh, Judah, representing kingship, leadership, you know, spiritual authority. And we also have um, <clears throat> the lamb, right? The lamb. Uh, we have the goat. We have the, the refer, the heifer, or let me say the bull. Yes, we have the dove. What else? We have the serpent. So there are many animals in the Bible. And those animals, um, most of them represent a... Yes, how can I say that? They, they represent a spiritual message, right? Because when we think on the lion, we immediately think on a Judah. Yeah, so the lion is a totem representing the spiritual position of Judah. The lion is also a totem representing kingship, as the kingship of Jesus, Isaiah, who is called Kosia Judah, the lion of Judah. Now, 
In the Kikongo language, or in the Bantu language, the lion is called Simba. Yes, the lion is called Simba. <clears throat> the lion is also called Nkosi. Nkosi Ayuda, which literally means the lion of Judah. Yeah? Simba also means lion in Bantu. Now, Simba um, is very... It's, 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 it's a very powerful name. It, it does not only refer to the lion, but it, Simba can also mean the one who holds. Yeah, so we can say that it may signify the one who holds power, the one who possess power. So when you think on the Lion King, the you know the animation Lion King, what do you see? You see the, this young lion who is a prince, right? And he's called Simba, because Simba means lion. Actually, um, this is very interesting. Listen, in Congo tradition, when twins are born, they get a twin's name. Okay, so they get twin's name. And the names for twins amongst the Bakongo people is uh, the firstborn is called Simba, the second born is called Nzuzi. So the twins are called Simba and Nzuzi. Very interesting, you see. Simba is the holder, the possessor. Nzuzi is the twin brother. So amongst the Bantu tradition, we already see the same thing what you see in the Bible, in the book of Genesis. I think Genesis 28 or something, where they talk about the birth of Esau and Jacob. What do we see? We see that when Jacob was coming out, he hold fast on the heel of Esau, right? Therefore, According to the Bantu understanding, the one who is holding the heel is called Simba. Because Simba also means to hold fast. Kosimba, to hold fast. So we have the tradition amongst the Bakongo, which goes or correspond, yeah, it goes parallel and correspond with the biblical story of the birth of Jacob and Esau. Because Nzuzi comes from a Kikongo root word that means one who quarrels. One who quarrels. So that's amazing, right? Because this tradition comes from the ancient ancestors. Yes, it comes from the ancient ancestors. So we adopted the tradition what, what was actually something that happened in the far past. You understand? So as our first, first, first ancestors got twin, they named them uh, by the circumstance of birth. You understand? So when the one was coming out and they saw his brother holding the heel of the other, they say, ah, oh, Tala, Simba, Simba. They named them according to the circumstance. And the other was named Nzuzi, which uh, comes from a Congo root word that means a one who quarrels, you know, the quarreler. Very interesting, right? I thought it would be interesting to share it with you all. And so we have Simba, which uh, signify lion, and the holder, but we also have another Bantu word, which means, yeah, which actually means the same thing, lion. Another Bantu word, which is, what was it? Kosi, Nkosi, Nkosi, also means lion. See, Nkosi amongst the Zulu means lord, you know. 
Lord, Master. A leader is called Nkosi in, uh, amongst the Zulu. Yeah. But Nkosi amongst Congo and Lingala speaking people refers also to the lion. Ingeta, Kembu, na platan Zambia, Mazulu. So, um, check out my Patreon page. You know, subscribe to my Patreon page. Uh, of course, I have additional teachings over there. Also, some reading materials. And uh, I try to post each month new teachings and material on my Patreon page. So, if you love my teachings, you love my spirit, my energy... Um, the revelations which we share here uh, you can uh, consider to subscribe to my Patreon uh, page and uh, support the work support the ministry alright Ingeta so don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube if you're new and of course welcome to this live episode so we're talking about the the Congo Lion and the leopard. Ingeta. Now, totem, right? I said those animals are totems. The lion is a totem. It represents something spiritual. The leopard is a totem. It represents something spiritual. The lamb, the dove, right, in the book. They are all Totems. Now, an, an, a totem is a natural object. Now, let me share my screen so you can uh, you can read along with me. Hello. Do we have sound? Is the sound back? Yes? Mm. 
sound is back yes all right yes like i said people it, it took me 20 minutes yes, i was having all kinds of errors and i don't know man just to set everything up okay the sound is back Hallelujah. Praise is to Zambia. Alright, so we're dealing with a totem and it can be an animal, an object, right? That have a spiritual significance. So the lion, the leopard, um, they are all totems representing a spiritual truth. Okay, and we know that a totem is also an emblem. A totem is also an emblem. Now, according to according to the Haari Hakodesh, who was a renowned Jewish teacher specialized in the mysteries of the Kabbalah yes. Noah had only two sons namely Cam and Japheth yes. and, um, and the one who was to be named by initiation into spiritual wisdom will be called Shem Shem meaning name or reputation this one would be the carrier or custodian of the reputation of the Most High. Yeah, the reputation of Nzambi. You can read, for example, Ezekiel 36. Now let's let's go there actually and uh, let's look it up. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 36 verse 23 interesting to okay now look at this and I will sanctify my great name he will sanctify what his great name And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. You see? And all the heathen shall know that I am Zambian when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. So I will sanctify my great name great name now name is reputation yes yeah, so who is the carrier of that reputation who has to guard the reputation of the most high he solele yes he solele but we are told we are rebuked that we have profaned the name amongst the heathen which you have profaned in the midst of them but um, the heathen shall know that I am Zambi Ampungu when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. You understand? This has not happened yet. Those who call themselves Ye Ish people have not been sanctified before the eyes of the heathens right say the other nations the ngoi the bango they have not been sent for even though they claim to possess the so-called holy land they have not been sanctified of zambi before the eyes of the nations though the nations have not witnessed the sanctification 
of the true people. It's a prophecy yet to be fulfilled. If you agree, show your hands in the chat. Yeah, use the uh, yeah praise hands in the chat. Ingeta. All right. So let's continue. And so the one who was to be called Shem, right? Who no. I'm messing it up. So, according to this Ha'ari HaKodesh, Noah just had two sons, namely Ham and Japheth. Yes, and the one who was to be named by initiation into spiritual wisdom would be called Shem, which means name or reputation. This is the one who would be the carrier or the custodian of the reputation of Zambi, whom in the Hebrew Bible will be called <coughs> Elohim. Elohim has to be uh, defined as the mighty ones or the gods. Okay. Some say, oh yeah, Nabi, why are you promoting multiple gods? We are not promoting, you know, polytheism that's a misunderstanding you don't understand what, what I'm teaching or what I say yes Shem is therefore a honorific title for the one who was to become the carrier of God's reputation among men and it is according to this renowned um, Jewish teacher who was a master teacher of the Kabbalah. Yes, he recognized and he taught that Noah, who is called in Congo Noka, only had two sons, and the one who was initiated into the spiritual wisdom received the name Shem. And the one who received the name Shem was actually from the line of Kam. From the line of Kam. And some people whom, whom they pronounce Ham. Ham. Yes. Whom people call the Hamites. Nabi. <sighs> Blasphemy. <laughs> Uh, yes, I know. You may think like that, but we need to renew our minds, okay? We need to renew renew our mind. Israel, Yisolele, is called Kushi for a reason, okay? Now, not to say, no, I will not even go into that right now, because yeah, uh, we will deviate too much. But I have uh, done some videos on this, so you can go and watch those videos, right? So, <clears throat> according to him, there are just two main archetypes. Yes. The son of Cush, who was his spiritual heir, is Nimrod. He is called Nimrod. Now, when you look at the name Nimrod, you have the consonants N M R. Yes, N M R. Now his name has the same letters with the Hebrew Namer, which means leopard in Hebrew. Yes, Namer, which is leopard in Hebrew. Let me see if I can uh, <clears throat> open something up. New. Okay, now let me uh, do you a solid. Now, Nimrod, yes, 
as the consonant N M R. The Hebrew word for leopard is namer, yes, which also has the consonant N M R. Yes. Is it big enough? Okay. Like that. So you can see that the name Nimrod in Hebrew and Namer for leopard in Hebrew have the same consonant N M R N M R. That's very interesting. Yes, that's very interesting. Right? Now, the kings. Now, before I go there, let me say this, that the leopard is one of the animal totems of Congo. Yes, the leopard. The leopard is one of the animal totems of Congo. Why do I say one of? Because we have uh, the lion, right? Um, Simba, yes, but also Kosi, which is the lion. Yes, we have the leopard, which is uh, Ngo. So, Lion Simba, I have explained it already, so I don't have to go into it again. And we have Nkosi, which is also Lion. Nkosi can also represent Lord or Master. Oh, what am I doing? Yes, Lord or Master. Nkosi. And the leopard in Kikongo is called Ngo. Yes, it is the ngo in ko ngo. <laughs> it is the ko in Congo. It's the ngo in Congo. So the Congo people may therefore consider it as the people who practice the wisdom of the leopard or the how can I say that? How can I put it? Those who have an alliance with the leopard. Yeah, something like that. So, but the lion and the leopard are animal totems of the Congo people. Yes, and it, it is exactly what you also see in the Bible. The lion and the leopard being associated with the ancient Israelites. Ingeta. Now, what is a totem? Let's let's go back and review what is a totem. A totem is a natural object or animal. That is believed by a particular society to have spiritual significance and that is adopted by it as an emblem. Another word for emblem is an ensign. Ensign. Yes. Which you also read a lot in the, in the Bible, except, ex, ex, especially in the book of Isaiah. Yes. An ensign. Um, well, let's 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 go there. For example, um, let's take for example, um, say eleven or something. Uh, say eleven. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where is that scripture, man? When they talk about uh, 
and he will be an end sign is 11 right let me look it up Hey, fasting is life. Mbote, Ndeku. You hear? You hear? Kembu. Um, now, let me go to another first. Maybe we'll come back to, to this one, but let me go to numbers. Numbers, I think, numbers two. Yes, let's go to numbers two. <laughs> Look at this. Every man. Now let's start the first one. And Nzambi, Yakongo, Yakongo spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Every man of the children of Israel, yeah, so Bana Isolele shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign, see, with the ensign of their father's house. That's the emblem of the father's house. Yes, and the synonym for emblem is totem. Yeah. Another synonym is ensign. Kembu, not a Tanzania manzuli. Yes, it's amazing, right? So the lion, you see, the lion and the leopard are totems of the Congo people, of the Bantu, the same animals who are used in the Bible as a totem for Israel and Judah are seen amongst the Congo people as their totem, the totem that represents the kingdom, yes, the spiritual significance of this totem. For the whole kingdom is seen in the lion and the leopard. Exactly the same as in the Bible. Right? Now that's amazing. That's interesting. See? Now here. <clears throat> there's a lot of words here that we can study just to, to prove our case and, uh, and to show you, to reveal to you that we are who we are. Yes, we are who we are. But let's uh, stay at this word for ensign for a moment. It's the word ot in Hebrew. Yes, ot. Look. It is translated as signs, tokens, tokens, which is actually the same as totem. Yes, totem is just a synonym, synonym for the word totem, it's same as ensign, miracles and mark. Yes, sign, signal, a distinguishing mark, a banner. See that? Now, when we go down, we can once again see token, ensign, etc. Now, the Strong's definition says the following. A signal, literally or figuratively, as a flag, a beacon, a monument, a omen, prodigy, evidence, mark, miracle, ensign, token. Yes, token. Token is the same as totem. Yes, it's the same as totem. What is a totem? An object or animal. 
which have a spiritual significance. Now, those animals now are the lion, the simba, and Nkosi, and the leopard, Ngo. Yes, the Ngo in Congo. So we, the Congo people, we are the people who bear the emblem of the lion and of the leopard. Yes, so we are the people of the lion. We are also the people of the leopard. Remember that. Two animal totems that represents people as a whole the collective yes as tribes we also had our own totems so you, you do, do you follow so as different tribes also have our own different totems and that's what we see in In this verse, yes, every man of the children of Israel, Bena Yisolele, shall pitch by his own standard with the flag of their father's house, you see, with the ensign, sorry. With the insane, that's the symbol, the emblem, the totem of their father's house. Yes? Okay. Now, now we have established that. Let's continue. Let's continue. So, the son of Cush who was the spiritual heir is Nimrod. Yes. Nimrod. Nimrod. So you have the consonant M, M, R. I showed you. And his name has the same letters, the same consonant. Yes. With the Hebrew Namer for leopard. Also the consonants N, M, R. Yeah. Leopard. Namer, the leopard in Hebrew. And the leopard is the animal totem of the Congo uh, as the lion is also a natural national totem of the Bantu people. Okay? So the kings who are the chiefs and great priests, and the, no, the kings, the chiefs and great priests among the Bantu people traditionally were the leopard skin. Yes, that's tradition. Now, why do the Bantu people, yes, the, the kings, the chiefs, and the priests, wear this leopard skin? Where is this coming from, right? The leopard skin <laughs> has a spiritual significance. Do you remember in scripture, for example, in the book of Luke, Isaiah said, "Wait in Jerusalem until you be, until you receive the power, or the promise of the Holy Spirit, and you will be endued with power." Now, to be endued with power, literally translated, means to be clothed with power. Now, our ancestors. They clothed themselves in power because the leopard skin represents authority, spiritual authority, kingship that descends from heaven. Yes, that's what the leopard skin represents. So by wearing the leopard skin, they clothe themselves literally and spiritually in power. Exactly what you read in New Testament. So these are mysteries. Okay, These are mysteries people don't understand. People are not knowledgeable about. So our ancestors believe that in the world, in the world that God and Zambi Boomba created, the leopard is above all animal. This animal is the English word guarantor, guarantor of the world and even the jungle, you know, of the world in particular. 
So they believe that that animal spiritually is above all the other animals. Therefore, that animal, the skin of that animal, represents spiritual power and authority. So they clothed themselves wearing the leopard skin in power, in authority, which is given from heaven, which descends from heaven. Because you cannot be a king, you cannot be a chief, you cannot be a priest unless heaven appointed you yes so you are born into this world to be a king a chief a priest or whatever if you were not appointed by zulu to be such you cannot be here on earth you know you cannot claim those positions here on earth you are a fraud heaven doesn't recognize you heaven does not know you in that position Yes, you are a fraud. Or a fraudeur. <laughs> so, the name Congo refers to the leopard. Ngo, which means leopard. Congo is the territory of the leopard. Congo, the Congo, we say Sub-Sahara, uh, the, the terrain, right? The, the habitat of the leopard. That's called Congo. I wanted to say something. I, it's, it, it skips my mind. I, I had something that I wanted to share. Hmm. What was it? You know, as I was talking, thoughts were coming in, right? Inspirations were running. But because I talked too much, Suddenly forgot my uh, my thoughts. Okay, no problem. It will come back. It will come back. Hmm. Yes. So the animal, uh, this animal, the leopard and the lion, and I will show you also scriptures. Okay, don't worry. I know you people like scriptures, so I will also show you scriptures in due time. Yeah. So these two animals the lion which is called simba yeah, the holder the king yeah, and kosi which also lion and a title also used for kings and chiefs amongst the zulu but also the congo people yes now being the king among the animals talking about the leopard and the lion, the leper symbolizes power and authority. Its skin is an attribute of royalty for anyone entitled to wear it. Yes. So, therefore, it was only reserved for kings, chiefs, and priests. Yes. Now, thank you, Matondo Tatanzambe. Now, when you revisit Egypt right when you revisit Egypt you will see that the kings were wearing the leopard skin not only the king but also the Egyptian priest and amongst the Bantu it's it's a well-known tradition okay it's not a secret um, Let me Google it and share my screen for a moment. Okay, look at this. So you see the leopard, right? You see pictures. Of Egyptian and Bantu wearing leopard skin. Yes. Egyptian people of Kama and Bantu wearing leopard skin. You can Google it. You see the 
leopard mask here you know let me yes amazing right when you see king i clothed in leopard skin in karma okay and here we see some uh, a comparison yes egypt with some uh, bantu people wearing leopard skin a lot of images and it's a famous image <laughs> Mm. It's a priest, I think, wearing leopard skin. Yes. It was like that. So the leopard skin for African people shouldn't be a surprise. You know, like, oh, really? No. It was very known, very well known tradition. Yes. That the priest kings and the chiefs used to wear leopard skin as a symbol of power and authority and you you may also remember um mobutu right mobutu who was a uh, uh, we can call him a king he also used to wear the leopard skin he always had that leopard skin upon his uh, upon his head, right? He was called the the, the leopard king, Mobutu. They gave him the the nickname the leopard king. Look at Mobutu over here. And do you see Mobutu? Says a circle. Look at him here, wearing the leopard skin. As a uh, mpu, you know mpu. Mpu is that head tire that he's wearing. The mpu is also a symbol of authority. Yes, the head tire that he's wearing is called mpu. It's a symbol of authority. We see um, Patrick Lumumba over here wearing the same thing. Let me click on him. Yes, so we see Patrice Lumumba. One of the heroes of Congo. He's wearing the leopard skin upon his head. So it has a double signification here. Because the leopard skin itself represents power and authority. And the mpu, the head, mpu, also represents authority. <clears throat> okay. Nice, eh? So, Mobutu considered himself the king of Congo. Alright. So, how you are doing? Uh, do you like the teaching? Don't forget to, uh, to give this video, this teaching, this episode today, thumbs up. If you haven't done so, invite some people to join us. Ingeta Campbell. Uh, fasting is life. If you want to join into this um, session, just let me know, and I will send you a. I will I will set up a Zoom link and invite you in because I am not on Streamyard, and so I can send you a Zoom link and you can join into this episode. Ingeta. So let's continue, right? Let's continue because we we, we still have some uh, some things here. Yeah. So the leopard, as the lion, is considered the king. Yes. 
They call the lion the king of the jungle, but the Congo say the leopard spiritually is more powerful than the lion. <laughs> That's what the Congo people say. Eh? So its skin is an attribute for royalty and anyone uh, who is entitled to wear it. And its teeth is worn as a necklace. Okay, so therefore you see the ancient Congo chiefs, they had the necklace you know, with the tooth of, uh, uh, of a leopard. Yes, so, and it was as a noble ornament. Yes, a noble ornament. And traditionally, tribal leaders uh, who affiliate uh, themselves with the leopard skin were considered to possess supernatural power. Yes, so they had this supernatural power. And some say that they even had power to transform into panthers, yeah, the leopard, or to control leopards. Yeah, so according to ancestral beliefs, they will have the power to transform into leopard yeah, by being infused with the spirit of the leopard. They will also have the power to control leopards from a distance in order to, you know, yeah, to scare some people off, to protect the territory, or even to kill the enemies. And the leopard, amongst the Congo people and amongst um, other Bantu people, inspires fear and reverence among the majority of the Congo tribes. Yeah, among the majority of the Besi Congo, the people of Congo. Now, in biology, the leopard is called Panthera pardus, is one of the five extant species in the genus Panthera, a member of the cat family. It occurs in a wide range of in sub saharan Africa. Yes, but of course, you know, they may also appear in Central Asia, um, some parts of Russia, India, etc. But the leopard originally is the animal of Africa. Yes, originally the leopard is the animal of Africa. Now, the leopard is mentioned in the Bible together with the lion. Okay? But in most translations, the leopard has been taken out. And they just mention the lion repeatedly. Yeah? And the leopard here and there. But normally, in some older translations, like the translation of the Bible, uh, of the French Bible, du Rabinat, yes, the Rabinat Bible in French, mentioned the lion and the leopard, always together, yes, always, as a pair. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Right? And I will show you. I will show you. <clears throat> okay. Let me see. Let us go. Let me open up a Bible. Where's my Bible? Where is my Bible? Okay, yes. So let me insert Genesis. Um... What is this? Okay, 
Genesis 49. First nine, okay. I'm not sharing my screen. No, let's share. Now Judah is what? Judah is called the lion's well, right? Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, he shall, who shall rose him up? So this is, yeah, King James Version, right? We can go to, let's say, Bible Hub, Bible Hub. Hub. Okay, let's go to Bible Hub and insert well, let's see okay now we have the international version you are a lion's cup of Judah Yahundi okay, Yahundi you return from the prey, my son, like a lion who crouches and lies down like a lioness who dares to rose him. Okay. Interesting. Now, you can read all the other translations, right? They just stick with the lion. Young lion, old lion. Lion's whelp, lioness. Yeah, they, it's it's the same. Yes, it's the same. Now, when we look into, uh, let me remove this. Okay. See, now when we look into the leopard in the Bible du Rabinat of 1899, we got a complete different story. Yes. And this is actually in French. Okay. I translated it to English. For those who may doubt. I will show it just in a minute, okay? Those who say I'm, <laughs> I just wrote this and I made it up. <laughs> I will show you this Bible in a minute, okay? This here, Bible du Rabinat, 1899. I will show you. Now we have the same verse over here, Genesis 49:9. That says, you are a young lion, Yahundi, or Yahundi. When you return, oh my son, with your capture, he's going to bed. It is the rest of the lion and the leopard. You see that? It is the rest of the lion and the leopard. But the King James, they say... Judah is a lion's whelp, etc., etc. No leopard mentioned. Nowhere. And this Bible, you know, this it's a rabbinical Bible. Okay? It's a rabbinical Bible. And it says that the lion and the leopard they rest together the lion and the leopard they rest together yahunde and isolele rest together <laughs> hallelujah kembu 
Now in the book of Deuteronomy 33, verse 20, Blessed be he who enlarge God, Gada. He stands like a leopard. See that? So God also stands as a leopard. Uh, he stands as a leopard and tears to pieces both arm and head. That's God for you. Yes, that's God for you. He stands as a leopard and he tears down in pieces both arm and head. Now, okay, let's go from the rabbinical Bible, yeah, the Bible du Rabbi, Rabbinat, and let's insert into the Bible Hub. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, now. International version says about God. He says, "Blessed is he who enlarges God's domain. God lives there like a lion, tearing at arm or head. See, where where is the leopard here? Where is the leopard? It's not there." Moses said this about the tribe of God. Blessed is the one who enlarges God's territory. God is uh, poised there like a lion to tear off an arm or head. Once again, no leopard. And of God, he said, English Thomas Version, Blessed be he who enlarges God. Gada. God crouches like a lion. He tears off no leopard mention. You see, so through all the translation, whatever translation you get, the leopard is not mentioned, but the lion. That's very strange. So why is this rabbinical Bible both mentioning the lion and the leopard simultaneously. Now, now we have Numbers 24. Yes, he couched, he rest like the lion, and what? And the leopard. Do you see it? He couched, he rest like the lion and the leopard. Who will dare? Wake him. Once again talking about who? God. Or Judah. I think it's talking about Judah in this case. Because it's actually the same as Genesis 49. Yeah, so it's just a repetition of the verse in Genesis 49. He couched, he rests like the lion and the leopard. Who will dare wake him up? Blessed are those who bless you people of the lion and the leopard who are the people of the lion and the leopard Congo who are those people the Bantu people yes we are the people of the lion and the leopard Simba Kosi Ngo Ingeta hallelujah come on show me those praise hands in the chat come on now show me those praise hands in the chat if you agree though if you don't, show it anyway. Hallelujah. Now, let me go online to this Bible, right? Bible du Rabbanit. And let's take this verse, Numbers 24. So let's go there because... Uh, Maybe you're doubting, like, hey, Nabi, what's that Bible, man? Show us the that Bible. Let me show you. Okay, now let me go back 
Now pay attention now, eh? Because I will show you the Bible now. I'll show you the Bible now. Take pay attention. What I have highlighted, that's the Bible. Bible do Rabinat. 1899 okay of 1899 and I got this from a Jewish source do you hear me I got this from a Jewish source <clears throat> okay here look at this this is the Bible see can you see it? It's the Bible in the left corner. You see the Bible over there. So you can go and uh, look this Bible up. It's in French. You can do some translation. And you can verify if what I'm saying is correct. Yes. So this Bible of 1899 mentions the lion. With all the other translations, I've kept out. Yeah, but this one mentions the lines. Very interesting. So we have to ask ourselves why. Yeah? Why? You see, it's a, a wiki source. La bibliothèque. La bibliothèque libre. Yeah. yeah. Free library um what's the first i forgot the first um 24 9 okay so this is chapter 24 and we go to first nine okay and it's in french as you can see see it's in french so we're reading here chapter 24, verse 9. Il se couche, il repos, comme le lion et le léopard. Yes? Now. He couched, he rest like the lion and the leopard. That's the translation. Yes. He is talking about Yisolele and Judah, Yahund, Yahundi or Yahundi. Yes. Il se couche, il repos comme le lion et le léopard. He couch, he rest as the lion and the leopard. Yes, and of course, you know, this one you all know. Can the Kushite change his skin? Or the leopard his spots? Yes. No, he cannot. You see that? So, we cannot change our glory and replace it for something that does not profit us. Because the leopard represents royalty, the leopard represents spiritual authority and power. So we cannot change ourselves to become something less. Yeah? As the leopard can also not change his spots. Because it's a natural thing for the leopard to what? possess his spots so it's also a natural thing for us bena congo bananzandi to stand in our position of spiritual authority as the custodians of this earth but we exchange our glory for something that does not profit. Hosea 13 verse 7. So that's very interesting, yes? Jeremiah 13. Let's stay there for a minute. Can the Cushite, can the Cushi, Cushi, 
And remember, uh, Isolele is also called Kushi in Amos 9-7, right? So can the, the children of Kushi, as they are called in Amos 9-7, change their skin? No, we cannot exchange our glory for something that does not profit us. As the leopard cannot change his spots. Okay? Because it's a natural thing for the leopard to have his spots. So it's a natural thing for us. Bena Congo Bananzambi. Banabantu. To have our spiritual uh, authority, our spiritual gifts, which we have received from Zulu, working in us Hosea 13 7 so I am become like a lion to them now this is now the judgment of the Most High yes the judgment of Zulu we are supposed to be the lions and the leopard yes when you come face to face with a lion and a leopard what happens with you Fear comes, right? You, you you become fearful because you know what that lion or leopard can do to you. It is the same glory which and the same respect and authority the people of old experienced. You understand? Do you remember when Joshua came out of Egypt, right? As they crossed the waters, according to the biblical story, those who heard about the reputation of the Israelites were strict and bitten with fear. Yes, with fear. So they are compared with a lion because when a lion roars, you know. That, that 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 voice that that powerful noise inflicts fear in most animals and they run when the leopard comes when the leopards um how do you say that uh, <laughs> when a leopard starts chasing you there's no place you can hide there's no place and no way you can outrun the leopard. He will tear you apart. And that's the fear and respect that people used to have and experience when they encountered Congo, strong Congo warriors. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. So I have become like a lion to them. It's now zombie, you know, Yakongo coming as an adversary against Isolele because of their rebellion, because of the sin. Now I have become like a lion to them, like a leopard. I lurk on the way. Hmm? Yes, like a leopard. I lurk on the way. Why? To destroy us. Yes. Because of his judgment. Yes. As a consequence of our sins and rebellion. Against the covenant of the fathers. With the most high. Hmm? Now, come on. Slow. What's going on? Okay. Yes. So, here. Therefore, I will be unto them as a lion, as a leopard, by the way will I observe. Will I observe. Okay, <clears throat> that's interesting. 
Okay? Leopard and lion. Now, mention together once again. Yes? The leopard and lion. Mention together. Yahunde and Yisolele are the leopards and the lion. Look at this. So, like I said, you see, so you have here the Hebrew word namer, what I explained at the beginning of this episode. Consonants N M R, which is the same consonant that spells the name for Nimrod. Yes, Nimrod. Nimrod is the same consonant that spells Nimrod also spells the leopard. Nimrod was the son of Cush. Cush, the son of Cham. Yes. Some people pronounce it Cham. They say they, the Jewish pronounce it as Cham. Cham, as if you're suffocating. But we say Cham. Cham. Kama. Namer. From an unused root meaning probably to filtrate it. To say be limpid. Hmm. And thus to spot or stain as if by dripping a leopard from its stripes. Leopard. Strong's definition. Leopard. Leopard as spotted. Jeremiah. No. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard spot? And of course, no, Habakkuk says something. Uh, their horses also are shifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. Jeremiah 5, 6. Wherefore a lion out of the forest shall slay them, and a wolf of the evening shall spoil them. A leopard shall watch over their cities. Yes, a leopard shall watch over their cities. Hmm. Interesting, eh? Okay, Isaiah 11, 6. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. And the leopard shall lie down with the kid. Yeah, see, leopard. The leopard. So the land of the leopard is the land of the ancient Israelites. The land of the leopard is considered Ko Ngo. Ko Ngo. Ngo is leopard in Kikongo. So Ko Ngo are the people who practice. The wisdom, the spiritual wisdom of the leopard. Because the leopard is the totem, one of the totem of the Bantu people of the Congo together with the lion. Yes, which is called Nkosi or Simba. Songs for eight. Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse. With me from Lebanon. Look from the top of Amana, from the top of Shinir and Hermon from the lion's den, from the mountains of the leopard. Yes. Do you have mountains in Israel? In the so-called state of Israel? Do you have mountains? No, you have hills. You don't have mountains. You have hills. But the mountains are found everywhere in sub-Saharan Africa. You have huge mountains. Okay, Sub-Saharan Africa. Congo also have the mountains of the moon, which is very spiritual. Very spiritual. Yeah? So, from the mountains of the leopard, which is Ko-Ngo. Ngo, meaning leopard. Very interesting stuff, man. I hope you enjoy this uh live episode yes i hope you enjoy this revelation this teaching 
I truly hope so. Because the Bible does speak a lot about animals. You know, we are familiar with the lion, we are familiar with the lamb, and you know the 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 the, the red heifer, the, the the goat, and whatever. But the leopard, not so much. So I hope this gave you some insight, some revelation to understand the true totems of Congo, which are the leopard and the lion always mentioned together in scripture okay the totems of his solele of yahundi and his solele as a people but as separate tribes we also had our own totems right and uh, let me just go there and uh, and show you okay look at look at this um, yes I think we read this first before but for those who came in late right and Yakongo spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, Every man of the children of Isolele, Bana Isolele, shall pitch by his own standard, which is the flag, with the ensign of the father's house. Yes, and the ensign of your father's house is the emblem or the totem of your father's house. In this case, of the sons of Jacob, Yakuba, yeah, or Akobi, according to others, Yakuba. Yes, it, it is the totem of the fathers, of the twelve patriarchs. The totems of the father are called ensigns in the Bible. Ensign. So those are objects or animals. Okay. Those ensigns are object or animals. And they're called the totem. Right? It is called totem. Now let's look up. Um, uh, boom, 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 boom. Let's say tribes of Israel, um, tribe of Israel emblem. Yes. Now, you. Let's. I will just pick pick one. Okay. I will just. Uh, let's let's take this one here. It's a beautiful one, right? So we see. As the totem, right? The ensign, which are the emblems, totem of the tribes of Israel, is Solele. Those totems can be objects or animals. Now, what is a totem? A natural object or animal that is believed by a particular society to have spiritual significance and that is adopted by it as an emblem okay now when we look at the totems we see objects and we also see animals see look at Levi Levi has the object Simeon has the object Ruben yeah, sometimes it's a boat, sometimes it's something related with water. Um, look at it. Judah. It's a lion. It's a lion. And leopard, right? We have seen it in scripture. Judah is not only described as a lion, but also as a leopard. Which can represent Yahunde and Isolele. Joseph. It's a, uh, what's that, weed or something? Um, 
plants can also be a totem, by the way. It's not mentioned in this definition, yeah, but it's actually a natural object, plants or animals. Yes, natural objects, plants or animals. That's a more complete definition. So plants can also be a totem, as the sycamore tree amongst the agikuyu is a totem right and the sycamore tree is also mentioned in the bible as the fig tree so we have benjamin as the wolf right? the emblem of benjamin the totem of benjamin is a wolf and we see gad as a tent an object we see asher um, is a tree right see the same as the agikuyu they also have the the totem in the tree of the sycamore but you get the point we see you know zebulon yeah, as an object for both we see dan as the animal as a snake yeah, and naphtali um it's not a goat and Issachar the donkey. There you have it. You know, the, the, there are many other symbols, of course, like this one. Hmm. But I like this one. It's, it's colorful. I like colors. Ingeta. Thank you for watching, beloved. I uh, I enjoyed this teaching. I hope you uh, also enjoyed it. It was very interesting. <clears throat> Even though <laughs> it's my own teaching, I found it very interesting to uh, to share. So I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learn something. I hope you gain some insight, right? Because I know that yeah, from certain corners, people love to talk about the 12 tribe chart. And I hope this gave you some more revelation yes, concerning the totems because those 12 charts i do not fully support them right because it's you know where's africa where's congo you know where is the african people amongst those 12 presentations of the hebrew israelite brothers it's none yeah so the banner of the Israelites, when you study them, you can actually see that those tall totems are also found amongst the Bantu. Is that just a coincidence or is there something more? We need to ask ourselves that. Is it just a coincidence or is there something? No, is something there? Kimbo, thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of this live episode. Um, it was something else, right? It's revelational knowledge flowed. I hope you learned something. I hope you understood this teaching, the message, revelation. Maybe you need to rewatch, rewatch. Uh, I said some things that I didn't fully go into it because i discussed them in different videos um, but it was good i think it was good yes now don't forget to thumbs up this video check out my patreon page uh, subscribe to my patreon page i have some additional teachings over there which are not here on youtube also, some teachings with I uh, with BSI, right? The Bantu School of Isolele, which I host. 
some teachings are also on Patreon. And I also share some reading materials and things like that. And, uh, and the seminar textbooks from all the seminars that we organized in the past are also there on Patreon. Uh, and, of course, you get to support the work and the ministry. Yes, by doing so, by becoming a Patreon partner, you also support this message, you support the teaching, you support the work, you support the ministry. So I will appreciate you if you do so. And special thanks and a special shout out to all my Patreon partners who are already supporting me and enjoying the content also on the Patreon uh, platform. May Tatanzambe bless you. I recognize you. And um, may he open up doors for you as you support this work and this uh, ministry. Because it's, it is a ministry, you know. It's, it's, it's a spiritual work. You understand? It's a spiritual work. And if we, Benakongo, Benanzambe, don't support those who are on the front lines, what can we expect? You know, if 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 I'm gone, I'm gone. You know, <laughs> if, I don't have, if, if I don't have any support, <sighs> but may Tatan Zamba bless you, may increase, may he increase all of you. I love you. I am for you. I'm not against you. I'm your brother. I'm your Nabi Kefa, your minister in this Bantu awakening. Not everyone understands what I teach. Some people are confused. Some people hate me. Some people, you know, and you love me. Or maybe a mixed feeling. I don't know. But I'm here. I will be continue to be here and teach as the Spirit will lead me to. And as I receive instructions from Zulu. Ingeta. So thank you uh, very much. Matondo. And uh, continue to praise the Most High, Nzamba Pungu, Toton Danzambi, now and forever in Geta. Oh, by the way, before I go, this weekend on the Sunday, I will uh, post the link later. I think I will post it tomorrow because when I'm done here, I'm going to bed. Yeah, but this weekend, this coming Sunday I will have a special live okay it's a special live episode with uh, a yeah, powerful sister yes and um, maybe uh, even with uh, Ron Dalton Jr. who may or not join us in this conversation yes and we will discuss some powerful things, okay? And the team will be bound to an Hebrewism of Black Africa. And so make make sure to, to join us this coming Sunday. Yes, this coming Sunday. Join us. I will post everything later online. Um, turn on the notification bell. So as soon as we go live, you can jump in immediately. Yes, it, it will be powerful. You don't want to miss this live episode. It's coming someday. You don't want to miss it. If, if you enjoyed this teaching, you will enjoy what is coming next. Hallelujah. So Tatanzambe bless you. Tatanzambe keep you. He shine his face upon you, be gracious to you, and give you his peace, his salama. I am Nabi Kefa, hey, and I see you next time. May Congo reign. We are the people of the lion and the leopard. Congo! Hallelujah! Ingeta!